sorry, had, had to work. That's why I'm late. Had to cater to paying clients. So let's get to it. The first question was, Mike, what about bulking? So bulking, aka the science of getting humongous, there is a YouTube video out which you can look up that I did. So I'm not going to go into all the details, but there's a couple things to understand. Bulking does not mean eat all the cookies. Okay. Most people think that when they are a beginner and they join the gym, they should bulk up. That's not true. Only because you don't have a lot of muscle doesn't mean you're ready to bulk. What do I mean by this? Bulking works best if you're lean. Let me backtrack. In the olden days, as my daughter put it, people, young adults, kids, played sports. So when they joined a gym, they often had an athletic base from playing soccer, track and field, whatever. Today, most people don't do anything. So the gym in their late teens, early 20s is the first time they exercise, which means they're often chubby. So if that person now says, listen to the bros, I'm a beginner, you are gonna bulk, you're gonna go from fat to fat beginner, okay? You should only bulk if you have a resemblance of abs. And even then, bulking does not mean I clean the buffet, whatever I want and I have four donuts pre-workout. It means a controlled weight gain, okay? So, you are not going to gain more than two pounds of muscle a month. Got that? That's still 24 for the year, which is a lot, okay? Now, you're gonna gain some fat, I get that, but still, if you're gaining eight pounds a month, you're just getting fat, okay? The next question also pertains to that, to bulking is, what about mini cuts during bulking? The answer to that is, it depends. So if you're saying, okay, I'm bulking for eight weeks, I'm kind of tired of eating all this much, I'm taking a week to eat at maintenance, I'm fine with that. If you're saying, I'm bulking for six weeks, I'm cutting for six, then I'm saying, whoa, 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 you're not gonna get anywhere, okay? You can't bulk, cut, bulk, cut. Um, you're just gonna basically run in circles. So if your objective is to get bigger and you're starting from a very lean base, you will get a little bit fatter as time goes on, but not a whole lot you know, to put on muscle. So if the mini cuts are for your digestive system break, psychological break, so that's fine. But if you're trying to be bulking at five or six percent body fat, it's not gonna work. Um, what do you think about intermittent fasting, Mike? You know what I honestly think about intermittent fasting? It's a cult, okay? It's a cult. So a cult in the sense that people believe that the laws of physics have been somehow magically disabled. So people will tell you, as long as you eat in that window, by the way, that window, right? Is that Eastern time? Is that Pacific time? You're not gonna gain any weight, just eat in that window. Has anybody ever seen that movie um, with uh, uh, Joe Pesci, my cousin Vinny, when he talks to the guy in the end of the courtroom and he says, are we to believe that those are magic grits, that the laws of physics don't apply in your kitchen? That's exactly the same thing. It's like, you still need a calorie deficit. Now, if you're saying that it's easier for me to eat in a window than during the day, Maybe, okay? The problem is twofold. For bigger athletes, it's hard to get the calories in. And it's also tricky to spread any protein because you have a limited time span. So for muscle growth, it's not optimal. However, when you, when you talk to the people with intermittent fasting, they will swear to you that calories don't matter as long as you don't consume them outside the window. And that's just insane, okay? What about growth hormone? Never happens, okay? No food or diet or training can manipulate your, your hormones, such as test or growth, to a level that drugs can. Think about it. If intermittent fasting would raise your growth hormone to the level of users, why would people pay two grand a month to get growth hormone? Same with keto. It's also a cult. Don't eat carbs. Eat fat to burn fat. No, you need a calorie deficit, okay? So science doesn't go black or white. Science goes a little bit in the middle. So. Personally, I feel that low-fat diets work best. Why? Because carbohydrates give you volume. They also make people happy. People that try to lose weight are usually exercising. 
Carbohydrates are great fuel for exercise, so you should consume them. Now then people say, oh, whoa, 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 you know, but carbohydrates aren't an essential nutrient. Okay, that's true. However, neither are planes. But if I want to go to Germany, I'd much rather take a plane than I swim. Okay? So the carbs will give me the energy to perform during my workouts and to get to that performance level where I get the leans that I want. So there were those questions. By the way, you guys can type in uh, new ones as you, as you will see fit. What do I do after a layoff? How do I get back? Okay, so there's two kinds of layoffs, right? There's an injury, in which point you have to rehab, but you can work out the rest of the body normally. And then there is loss of motivation. So if you have fallen to the slums, the first thing is you don't beat yourself up. You come back, I would suggest, with 20 minute whole body workouts. Don't try to do what you did before. So you come back, you pick my personal favorite, one mechanical drop set for the chest, one for the back, one for the legs, something for the shoulders, and go home and do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 20 minutes in or out. And then you add another set and so on and so forth, and you build yourself up from there. If you, after layoff, come back and you say, I wanna hit the gym five times a week, you're gonna frustrate yourself. So, you know, ease in gently, whole body workers, keep them short, add five minutes each week. Hey Mike, what's, what's your motivation to stay in shape? Um, I think that's the wrong word. Um, I'm not always motivated. I, I, there are a lot of times I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but it's, first of all, it's the only thing I'm reasonably good at. Um, secondly, it gives me the ability to help others, as corny as that may sound, so I feel I should lead by example. And it's really a habit, okay? Like I've been doing this for so long, like a quarter century, that's really all I know. So I think people always look for motivational quotes and God, I'm so sick of motivational quotes on Instagram, like every freaking Wednesday. Oh God, Bible quotes, enough. It's just training, okay? So it's, it's a healthy habit, it's like, it's like brushing your teeth, right? So um, there is no motivation. I mean, I'm not gonna miss the Olympian time soon or anything like that. It, it's just simply a way of living that I have, you know, grown accustomed to and that I genuinely enjoy. I like training for the most part, not, not every day, but you know, for the most part, I'm pretty happy in what I do. So there is no deep seated motivation. I like, I struggle like everybody else. Okay. Uh, Mike, what are your guilty pleasures? Well, I brought some stuff. Food wise, marzipan, but the good stuff, is that the right way? has to be from Germany, sorry. Then, if you haven't figured this out, I'm dorky. So I like books on history, politics, and then military equipment. That's what I truly enjoy. Uh, how do you define failure? So there's two ways to define failure, right? So there's what the broskis call failure. Dude, I'm stuck under the bench. Not what you should be doing. It's not what you should be doing, ever. Mechanical failure is when form breaks down. That means if the rep speed slows down or you're losing your moving muscle, meaning say you're doing a chest press and you're rolling your shoulders forward, you're done. Um, you're doing a curl and you're losing uh, your lats, you start swinging, you're done. Um, you're doing squats, the knees are buckling in. So whenever other muscles help you, that's failure. You should never do half reps, ugly reps, even assisted reps I'm partial toward. These things exhaust the central nervous system greatly without providing a lot of benefit in terms of muscle growth, okay? So that's what I define failure. I define failure as mechanical failure, not as complete failure. Um, what happens if you take too long of a break between sets, meaning two minutes and over? I think that's um, an interesting question. So. It really depends. So let's say if you're sitting on your phone, you're updating everybody on Instagram, you just did this awesome set, your training is kind of screwed because your motivation is just gone. If you're taking three minutes where you maybe walk around the gym and you really focus, you're getting in touch with whatever you want to do and rocking that particular next set, then there's nothing wrong with it, you know? But if you're shooting the shit with your bodies and this, that, the other, then that's really true. So like two minutes of doing one thing do not equal two minutes of the other thing, if you, if you get where I'm coming from. So, um, needless to say, like the other day I was, for whatever reason, I timed this one guy, 
and he took nine minutes between sets because he had to let everybody on social media what he was doing. Needless to say that when you ask him to work in, he's like, what, I got three more sets? And I said, well, that's going to be another half hour. That's obviously a little bit too long, okay? So you want to be, you know, not going over three minutes. But like I said, if you take this time to really focus and you, you get into the set, then there's nothing wrong with that. If you take the time to, you know, update your social media, then that's probably a wasted workout. If that makes any sense. Um, how do I overcome my poor sleeping habits? So it's an interesting story. So, so my backstory is that before I was diagnosed properly with bipolar, I had a lot of white nights, which is just awful. So you hammer around with two hours of sleep and that's just, I don't wish this on anybody, honest to God, this is horrible. So, and not one bad night, but three, four bad nights and also become a zombie. Um, the medication I'm taking sometimes causes me to be hung over until 10 a.m. or so. Um, that's also not so good because it kills my morning workout. So the solution really is for me, I just have to be very regimented when I take the medicine and uh, function the best I can, but it's certainly not up to I've always been a poor sleeper, um, but the less you obsess about it, the less harmful it actually becomes. Like the more in your head, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna sleep and I'm gonna be so tired, then the worse things get. What do you think of German volume training? Nothing. I get to say it because I'm German. So German volume training is 10 sets of bench, alternate 10 sets of bent over row, let's say, right? No. First of all, it's insanely boring. It's so boring. I've done it, it's boring. Secondly, I'm not a big fan of training alternating muscle groups in one day, we've talked about that. And secondly, thirdly, all you do is you cover that one muscle at mid-range, okay? So it would be much more intelligent to, let's say, you want to train chest, you want to do 10 sets of chest, you dedicate three sets, let's say, to, to the stretch where you're like having a low fly, then you could do four sets of, let's say, floor press, which would be more mid-range, and then you could wide grip push-ups where you just squeeze out the top third, and you had the, the, the last part of the strength curve covered, okay? It would also be much more interesting and less injury-prone. So the traditional German volume training is not something I have ever enjoyed or gotten anything out of it but sore elbows and joints. So no. Restaurant calories, how to estimate them? That's a good question. So in New York City restaurants, chain restaurants, have to have the calories up, right? Problem is that's useless. So first of all, the FDA allows 20% over. So something says 500 can easily be 600. Secondly, so the restaurant makes those calories, right? And they give it to a test and they put it in the oven and they burn it and they measure the calories. That's great in a perfect scenario. But now there's Joey who's half asleep because he's studying for his masters. And he just reaches into the box of rice and whatever at Chipotle and gives you the dish, okay? That can be double what's on there, okay? So first things first, if you don't cook, and you don't know portions, you have no chance in hell of eating right in restaurants. You think you might be eating healthy, but you will be overeating. Secondly, you have to assume that restaurants are in the business of selling you food, not of getting you in shape, which means there will be extra butter. That's why it tastes stuff good too. If you ever go to a restaurant and you eat rice, you're like, oh, this is really yummy. You make your own rice, you're like, well, this is way different because you didn't melt a stick of butter in your rice, I hope, right? Steakhouses, there's a guy who does nothing but ladling butter on the steak before it comes to you. That's why it's so nice and runny. So when you go out, you have to clarify that that day you're going to be over. So eat less during the day. Um, skip the carbs, go straight protein and plants. Um, no sauces, ask for everything on the side and you will still be over. That's, but that's the best you can do. Okay. Restaurants are just, they're there to sell you food. They're not there to get you jacked, okay? That's just not their, their job, so sorry about that. Training when sore. Yes, you can. Sore is not injured. So this is something weird in the bodybuilding world where people always think like um, they, can't, they cannot work out um, if they're sore. That's total nonsense because if the muscle being sore, it recovers very, very quickly, okay? So that doesn't mean, imagine like the guy who went up to Mount Everest said like, okay, um, I'm going to take the day off because my legs hurt and I'd rather freeze to death than that I actually do another climb here. Of course, he wouldn't do that. 
right? So you can perfectly find train when sore. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, eating around the workout. Eating around the workout, um, that's also really easy to do. So in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter all that much, okay? So unless you train twice a day, um, there is, there's nothing bad happening uh, if you if you miss uh, if, if you miss uh, a meal or so so let's say sometimes my personal work is like I have like four clients in a row and then I work out so I don't take the time to eat so I kind of have like may or may not have some gummy bears as I eat as I work out and then a protein shake as I go along and then I eat afterwards okay or sometimes when I train really early in the morning like I'm not gonna get up at three to eat breakfast. I'm just not okay this just makes no sense so you, know, you, you do the best you can but the weekly calories the weekly macros matter okay not so much what you do that particular day so you will not immediately decompose if you missed the pre-workout meal and you will not lose all your gains if you missed the post-workout meal right away so like if you know within three hours around the workout you get some food in then that's perfectly fine okay um, training for fat loss versus training for muscle growth, it's the same thing, okay? So, training for fat loss and training for muscle growth, two things matter. If you're training for fat loss, we are assuming you're eating less, okay? By that logic, the body wants to get rid of the muscle. So, the only way to keep the muscle on is to use it. And using it means maximum tension at all times, right? So, all the stuff like jumping up and down, throwing the ball, battle ropes, that's all nonsense, okay? Because you're losing tension. So, the only difference is that people who are in a bulking phase probably have a bit more energy, so they can probably do an extra set or so, but the training does not differ. It tells us to cover the strength curve, you have to have maximum time on attention and move the most weight you can, otherwise the muscle will get lost or won't get built, okay? Okay, so I think that's all I have here. There's one more question I can take uh, before I gotta go back to work. So if any of you guys wanna chime in, um, otherwise I'll see if there's anything I overlooked. But um, I think we covered a lot today. Restroom calories, training for fat loss, training when sore. Does excess fiber hurt your diet? It does not, it makes no difference. Okay guys, um, with that, I leave you uh, into the rest of your Wednesday. Thanks for watching. As always, and speak next week. Bye.